I'm gonna break something. I cannot figure out this in this short window of time. I just don't have enough time. Building awesome stuff and trying new things are two of my favorite activities. When a client reached out and wanted a all black glass river table, my ears perked up and my brain almost exploded. One, because I think this idea is awesome, but two, because I definitely think it's an opportunity for some redemption. Because last time we tried a glass river table, things went a little bit sideways. I just really hope I didn't waste $5,000. Jordan screws some shit up, he fixes some shit, saves our ass. So here's the plan. We're gonna be building this table out of solid white oak. I've got an awesome slab that I think will work perfect for it that has just enough movement on the live edge to make the river itself interesting. The client wanted oak and uh, this is a much more stable and easy to work wood. So we shouldn't need to sandblast anything like we did on the cottonwood burl. And it should also be strong enough to hold its own weight across the length of it, unlike the cottonwood burl. Lastly, I do think I have a better way of routing the river into it. And if I know anything from building as long as I have, then I'm probably gonna regret everything I just said to you. So let's go play with some wood. The overall table width is going, we're going for here is 40 inches. This slab is already in the 37 ballpark here, 39. So we've got some opportunities for what I like to call meat removal. If you look at this slab in particular, this is a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. Now I do like the figure coming through here and the way we're gonna finish that we should still get some. We've got some rays and flecks in this area, if you can see, which are uh, indicative of white oak, which is one of the reasons I love the wood. So, reason I picked this slab is because I can still get away for the most part with 12 or so inches of material and work my way around, for the most part, all these uh, imperfections here in the center. But to make this easier, I'm gonna find the center of the slab, take a chalk line, cut this thing down the middle, and then we're gonna build a frame and I'm going to then use the frame to dictate how much material we're gonna get rid of on each side. All right, so the purpose of this is because I like to try and get as consistent a river as possible. I also you know, think it's a good practice if, uh, if you've got a super long piece of slab to just kind of pick the best orientation. This slab is not that long, but like our cottonwood slab was super long and that needed a little bit more refinement. We've got all these issues on this side specifically that we want to kind of keep out. I want the river to be uniform and we have enough play. Like we're at eight and a half there. And once that barks off, we're at about 11. I can scooch that out a little more. Probably best to eliminate as much of that. We have this huge check down here that I'll have to stabilize with resin so that's gonna eliminate a lot of the, so eliminate the two knots and a lot of this issue down here. That looks sweet. This is her, it's my girl. Once I get it to size, I'll come back with the track saw and cut it perfect. The next thing I wanna do here is clean the edge on the slab. Gotta get all this bark off. A couple methods we'll go through here. I'll typically just start with a chisel though and see what I can pop off by hand and then I might bust out other tools like a, I don't know, we have these nylon wheels, I've got a brush sander, a few other things. So get these cleaned up and then probably start filling voids. Ooh. 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 We're gonna have a new record. Oh, Tyler, I didn't even think we were going for it. Oh, son. I don't think that's got a beat. No, that's only like. Four that's like feet. a little over four feet. Yeah. He peeled that one. Mm. It was a good shot though. Yeah, that one went way better. Let me get that nylon wheel out. So it's going to get dusty. There's a little bit of crowning on this side right now, and they're not perfectly flat. So before I do any epoxy work, we're gonna thin these out a little bit. We're still looking at an overall thickness right now of like two and a quarter, so we have plenty of room. Yeah, and then I'll get into the epoxy film. But first, poop. So I was looking at these slabs, and obviously um, we bought these pre-flattened, and they're not completely flat. But it's always important to check your stuff because <clears throat> looking at it, we have a bit of a crown, which I need to address. So I came and I measured it and I was like, wow. Wow. We're looking at a 2.18 here, but if I come to this edge, it's 2.14, came in a different part. 
Query 2.17 is a 2.0. So there's more material like in that section, which is gonna be higher. I'm assuming this is similar. When I flip this, this side's been surfaced, but obviously you can see that bow. See how it's racking around on the table? The side's been surfaced and we've got about an eighth inch gap there. Now these are about a quarter inch over what I want. So I'm gonna put this side down, run them through the planer, reassess. Should help this out a bunch. So I can't just trust everything you buy from sawmill. Unless you're buying from my sawmill, which we do have a ton of slabs available, J&J &J Lumber Company. There's some awesome B-roll of it, and then there's a link down in the description. We ship all over the United States, if you're looking. So, it took a lot of the issue out. There's a little bit in the center there, but because we kept flipping it as I was putting it through, very slim passes, about a sixteenth at a time. Got most of the thickness that was too much out of there. So I'm just gonna clean up this crack here a little bit, tape this sucker off, fill a bunch of these voids with resin so we can get this thing cured overnight and I can get back working on it quick. This is important, I've got black, a little bit high performance, but I mixed it with active charcoal instead of with an epoxy pigment. I know this isn't gonna stain the wood. We're staining the whole thing black, so I don't really think it matters, but I wanna make sure that it's all the same black. So I should be able to pour this in and then as it fills, I can sand off anything that's on the top and not have any of that pigment stuck for when we do the stain on the top. So if you're confused by what I'm saying, when I wipe it around like this, sometimes that pigment will stick to the top of the wood and looks like shit. One week later. So we're super behind on this project. I just welded the base together and now what I have is the top laid out here. What I like to do in these situations is take a piece of scrap and then clamp the table down and then lay out all my measurements. I'll cut the table to length on the, with a track saw after I have this clamped down what I sometimes do is I will just run a couple uh, pin nails, like 23 gauge pin nails underneath to hold this thing together. I'm probably gonna do that just so we can hold this sucker on the CNC bed at the same size we need. So I'm um, gonna get this thing on the CNC bed. Everything is aligned and square and the table's exactly where we want it to go. In the past, I'd be doing this out in the shop, um, but we're gonna actually cut this on the CNC now because Chris has assured me that this will be perfect. I'm just gonna outline where I would by hand put the glass. And then what we'll do is we'll take a photograph and then we'll tool this out on the CNC. We'll get the pocket cut here. We'll send that over to glass. Get this bitch moving. Chris and I want to be adults about this. We're going to run a scratch path before we run the first tool path to, to cut the pocket out. So we got this scratchy bit. Only thing that we changed is this little bit right here on the end. I wanted to just get a little bit more beef, but she's looking good. So let's send it. All right, so it's been a while, probably like a month since we ordered the glass for this. We had a bunch of issues, but it's finally in. So we've got the table mocked up on the, the assembly table here, and it's time to test fit the glass. I don't know if there's anything more nerve wracking than, the, than this part right here. So let's get to it. Okay, turn on its side, three, two, one. Okay, now you're gonna walk over there. Avoiding all catastrophe potential disasters. Actually, lean, okay. What do you want to do? Well, this side over here is gonna be like much closer. Yeah, gentle, gentle, gentle. Okay, that was actually pretty gentle. Damn! Yes! That looks sick! Hell yeah, he did a freaking phenomenal job. So check this out. Last time we had our glass cut by a water jet. And if you guys recall, we'll pop it up here. Boop, how many issues we had with it fitting because of radiuses and stuff. This time we sent it off and it was hand cut. We went with a different company and it looks butter. We couldn't, the, the, the whole project was at a stall because we had to make sure this fit before we could move on to finish and stuff. But she's looking great, so. Now you guys gotta put that back into her case. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Ron? I was born ready. I'm Ron Swanson. Lou doesn't know he's on camera. All right, let's go. So we ran into an issue. We didn't have the wood clamped down tight enough to our CNC when we cut the pocket. So it cut deeper here, it was probably bowing up. So this distance here is too thick, but in the center, it's not as deep. The only way to fix this in my head, and if you've got a better answer, let me know, but I have to bring the entire bed where the glass is gonna land 
down to the same thickness, which is gonna be, this is gonna be my zero the entire way. So we have this wide plate here and I've got a bushing that'll keep me from riding into the edge so I don't screw that profile up. And then I'm just gonna come and slowly meander my way down both slabs. Our slabs are the exact same thickness from the top, so cutting down should be the same reference. Then from there, we'll be able to final sand these to get our perfect reveal consistently on the top. We could throw it back on the CNC bed, but we're not very confident that it'll be the exact same. There's a little bit of a dent where I, I went out of the jig and stuff. So fortunately, we cut just the outline of the river, which I can then use a templating bit to fix. So it should be a pretty easy fix. And then we can get to fill in any more voids that popped up as we planed this and finishing this sucker. And we're perfect. You can see completely fixed any issue. And so the table's an eighth of an inch shorter, but now for one final planing on the two sides, one final fit of the glass, and then we're on the finish. This part always puckers my butt. So I'm pretty happy with the fit. It's looking really solid. We've got a little uh, finessing to do, but the reveal here is exactly what we want. It's like barely a finger, fingernail. Once we sand the top down, it'll align perfectly. So hard parts out of the way. Now on to finishing. You sure about that? You sure about that? Everything that needs sanded on the top is done. The river's fixed. It's looking pretty awesome. The next thing I need to do is cut the pockets for the table base. So look at how we did this. So we custom built the base. You obviously saw that. Sent it out to powder coat. And now we need to mount these plates. I want to recess them. So I want to flip this over. But we have to keep perfect orientation on the table with the table being in two pieces. So we know our template's exact same as our river. We're gonna clamp the table together with the template inside of it and then flip the whole thing over and put our table base on it. I don't know another way to do this. If you do, please feel free to let me know. This is the best idea I got. Important to make sure you mark what side goes to what because you know how dumb we all are. So in order to make this cut, I have to suspend the router over this whole template. And I have a super shallow bit. My big routers don't have a plate this big. I'm just gonna make out of this quarter inch piece, big old base so I can shimmy this sucker around on top of this template. And then it'll never fall in the hole. I'll start from the inside and work my way out, but you get the drift. So we have to set our depth. It's gonna get a little squirrely. Make sure you're measuring to the carbide. I'm probably doing this. This is gonna piss off a ton of you, but I can't figure out a way to do it better or faster. I'm just holding an exposed router blade up towards my face with the battery in it while doing that. I mean, everyone's gonna have an answer on why I'm an idiot. We made this template on our Thunder laser. That thing's coming more and more handy the more we have it, I'm telling you. With a laser like that, we're cutting quarter inch parts so much faster than we ever would on the CNC. And you just start thinking of all kinds of awesome ways to make your workflow faster. Um, if I wanted to, you know, he could have probably mocked this up in five minutes instead of me building it and done the same thing. So if you don't have a laser, I would highly consider considering a laser. Sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their heads. Hey, real quick, are you a woodworker who runs a business but is struggling to find leads? Well, I just launched my brand new five-day lead launch challenge where I'm gonna guarantee you find at least five leads in the next five days following my frameworks. If you're interested in doing that for your business, I got a link down below, sign up now, and I promise you, you will not regret it. So we're gonna mark all the holes, get the threaded inserts in, and then it's finish sanding and finish. If you notice here, we have slots on the outside, and these are a little bit sloppy, but these are locked on the inside. The intent there is that we lock the table to the interior, try to limit the contraction into the glass. That's my intent there. Is that right? I don't know, I made it up. I keep saying it's the last mock-up, but we just like to keep mocking things up. It's the first time we've had the glass in with the reveal. Break that edge, and then we are what I like to call titty city. Not bad. This is a new Sam. Did we, already, did we introduce new Sam in this video? New Sam. He's not trying to be old Sam, so don't get all pissy. If you haven't seen the Alfie table, go watch it. Yeah. All right, it's looking good. What do you think, Pubaluba? Ooh, I don't even have a joke. That just, that looks sexy. Some might call it a sex bomb. We are a sex That's what old Sam would have called it, and myself. Fine is really dead set on the black. 
And that's what she wants, that's what she gets. But what do you think? Would you leave it? Raw wood, white oak? I probably would, but I just love white oak. So now we gotta take this thing apart and sand for 18 hours. Five hundred years from now. All right. So if you come in here, look at this. Just look at it. What the heck is that? When we sanded the top down further, all of these bubbles were trapped under the surface of the resin, and they all came through. So I'm gonna take this incy beansy teeny weeny little sixteenth inch bit and carve that channel out and pour more epoxy in there to try and fix it. It just looks way too terrible to be on top of the table, especially at an end where someone's gonna sit. And I'm so pissed that I didn't catch it till, like Sam's wiping those down for finish. And I'm looking at this like, damn it, it looks terrible. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe the bottom of the tables down. I'm gonna finish the bottom first. We're gonna go with a black pre-color, then an all, then a black finish on top of it. It should look jet black and you should still be able to see all the grain and stuff. The reason I'm not doing a, a sprayed black is if you ding or dent that, um, you're more likely to dent through um, on a dining table and see, unfortunately, the color of whatever's underneath it. So for this and it being a dining table, we're gonna do this Rubio Ultra Black treatment. Very descriptive. Like we made a sample and it was super confident. Now I'm like, what the hell are we doing? Damn, it's black. It says to go across the grain. It's weird because it's pre-color and it's like thicker than you'd think. Jet black. Now we just get to send it. I'm gonna do the top first. Maybe I should do the edges first. Ah! Okay, edges first. I don't know what to do. It does completely change it. I can't imagine it's anything more than just like a modified stain. So it should like function similarly. Had to bring Lou in. Um, we were getting a little bit of splotchiness on this, so we're gonna come back over top of that. I'll hit that with like a second coat. Wood can only absorb so much, so a second coat usually doesn't do anything. My hope is that the second coat reactivates the like base coat and with that wet, we'll just get a little bit of a more uniform dry. Okay, so let this sit for a few days to dry um, and then I came back and I kind of just burnished everything to give it a consistent sheen before applying the top coat. This is the Rubio Oil Plus 2C Black. And we're just gonna spread this on. This is the bottom first. Hope it looks amazing. Looks great on the samples. And then um, from there, we'll get on to the top. It's looking really good. It's filling in all those pores. It is sucking it up good. Game time. So I'm gonna break something. Mostly because I haven't used this product in a large application before, I use it in small ones. But when you go bigger, things tend to have issues. And we're having some sheen problems on the, this side only. The other side looks fine. And we just did a little research and a little digging. It seems like we had some overlapping in the pre-color application process that we didn't do, that we did do, I don't know. I'm not gonna lie, I love Rubio, but I'm pretty pissed off at the lack of instructions on the can for the pre-color application. So the only solution seems to be sanding this whole thing down and reapplying, still trying to hit our deadline, which this thing needs delivered in like three days. So I get to sand what was just freshly applied. Go me. It no sense. Use a damp cloth. Damp with what? So it's about seven o'clock in the morning and I just came in to get my day started. And I'm looking at this tabletop and you can even see from here, we're having the same sheen issues. And I'm still getting, I'm getting residue on my hands. I cannot figure out this, this pre-color in this short window of time. I just don't have enough time before we gotta get this to the client. We've got two days. So we're gonna pivot. I'm gonna sand the thing completely down back down to bare wood, um, and we're gonna come in with a tinted lacquer, something that I know uh, how to do, something that I've got great results with in the past, um, and then I will buff that down to a matte sheen so it matches. I'm really concerned about the live edge, how I'm gonna get that color off because the lacquer will not bond to the oils in the Rubio finish, I do not think. So, yeah, pray for me. Well, this is my last opportunity to fix it because ain't no coming back now. Everything's prepped and ready to go. Let's see how this goes. 
let us spray. Everything should go flawlessly at this point because we really don't have the time for it to not. And if it does f up, I don't know who I'm gonna blame. This could make or break the whole, whole thing in multiple ways because it is glass. Okay. Bam. Go underneath and crack all the bolts we just tightened. We tightened all the bolts, which we, we shouldn't have done, because um, there is some play in those. Um, that'll allow us to drop it in. As I mentioned when we were putting the mounting plates on, if you recall, we have the interior locked so that it, it helps um, the expansion of the wood go outwards uh, and not inwards, because that could potentially be hazardous to the, to the glass. But it is still a sloppy hole. Like the hole's bigger than the head. Everyone loves my sloppy hole comments. I put a, I put a TikTok up about sloppy holes and it went bananas. All right, we're here for delivery. We've got everything here, good to go. The glass, always a pain in the butt, but we're gonna get this in the house. Client uh, hasn't seen it yet, which is always fun reveal. So, um, fingers crossed, we're in the home stretch. Okay, my end is going down there. So it took a little longer than we anticipated. We had a few hiccups, but I will say, this could be one of the best things we've ever built. And I really hope you like it. Oh. My God! <laughs> I love it. I love it. Is it what you were picturing? I, I mean, way better. Yeah? Hey! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I love it. This class. Yeah, so the glass, we're, we're super happy we went with the change. I think this fits much more of like a tempered aesthetic, you know, which is like a not, it's not as poppy as that other color. Yes. Yeah. And all black is like, it's risky, but with a little pop of color, I think it looks phenomenal. I love it. I'm so excited. We finally can eat in here. Oh, wow. We got our butt kicked on the finish, um, but. We we're happy with how it turned out. No. <laughs> All right, and that's gonna be a wrap on this one. This thing turned out pretty sick, I've gotta say. I am blown away by how awesome it is, even though it did kick my ass. And don't forget, if you're a woodworker who's looking to make more money and stop having your business kick your ass, I've got my lead launch challenge that just dropped. The link's down below. Check that out, and then let me know, what are we gonna build next?